Hello friends, in this session we will see Nyquist stability criteria. Let us begin. So for starting, let me take one example. Let us take GH equal to K times S plus 1 upon S into S minus 1. This is your GH right see very very important points okay yes if you see gh is what gh is the loop gain right or we can say open loop gain as well right yes if you see the numerator gives you what this numerator gives you what it gives you open loop zero why because it is a loop gain and Denominator gives you what? Denominator gives you what? Open loop poles. Right? This, this also gives you what? Open loop poles. Right? Right? Yes. Now, if you observe here, what has happened? What has happened? If you equate this to 0, s minus 1 equal to 0, you find s equal to 1, which means you have got one pole on the right half of the S-plane or not. Yes. Which means what? Which means this open loop system is unstable or not? Yes. So I can say that open loop system is unstable. Is that right? Yes, definitely. Now, I will give you one example. If my open loop system is unstable, does it mean that my closed loop system is also unstable? What is the answer? Answer is we don't know. We need to check. How to check? I will talk later. But for time being, for, from time domain analysis, you know that. How to check that? You know there is something called as characteristic equation. Right? And you know that this characteristic equation is nothing but 1 plus gh. Is that right? Yes. Which is equal to 0. So, if I just put it this way, so if I put 1 plus k into s plus 1 upon s into s minus 1 equal to 0, then I get s squared minus s plus ks plus k is equal to 0. So, I can write this as s squared plus k minus 1 into s because s is common plus k equal to 0. This is my characteristic equation. This is a characteristic equation, right? Yes. Now, I will do a simple experiment. What will I do? I will first place k equal to 0 and then I put k equal to 2 and then I will put k equal to 5 and then try to understand what happens. Let me just do that. Yes. What will I do now? I will put, let me put k equal to 0. Let us see what happens. Right? If I put k equal to 0, I get s squared plus 0 minus 1 into s plus 0 which is equal to 0. Therefore, I get s squared minus s equal to 0. Is that right? This means s into s minus 1 is equal to 0. So, I can say that s is equal to 0 and s is equal to 1. So now I can comment that yes, my closed loop system is also unstable. Why? Because I have got one pole on the right half of the S-plane. Now if you see, these poles are what? These poles are not open loop poles. They are closed loop poles. Why? Because they are roots of the characteristic equation. Now, let me put k equal to 1. Let us see what happens. If I put k equal to 1, what I get is s squared plus 1 minus 1 into s plus 1 equal to 0. So I get s squared plus 1 equal to 0. That means s is equal to plus minus g. It means that for k equal to k equal to 1, right? So yes, so it indicates what? It indicates that the poles which are there, those are like this. At 1, 
j minus 1j these are the poles this means that the system is marginally stable is that right and it is oscillating at frequency of what at frequency of what one radians per second because you know that this is nothing but j omega n right so j omega 1 so if you think of j omega n if you compare it with 1 j you understand that this one is nothing but omega n which is nothing but the frequency of oscillations natural frequency of oscillations right yes now let me put k equal to let me make some space here let me put k equal to let us say 5 and see what happens if I put k equal to 5 then what happens let us see I get a squared plus 5 minus 1 into s plus 5 equal to 0 therefore I get s squared my plus 4s plus 5 equal to 0 if you place this in calculator then you find the roots to be equal to 2 plus or minus j which means one root is minus 2 plus or minus j which means one root is minus 2 plus j and another root is minus 2 minus j so that indicates that you have the poles let us say here somewhere which means this system is stable what do you understand from this what do you understand from this let us conclude something beautiful you saw that your open loop system is unstable you agree yes definitely it is going to be unstable because even if you put here k equal to 5 let us say then also open loop system parameters will not change right it will not change this is the open loop system only but what happened but what happened as you varied the values let us say you put k equal to 0 then you got the system is unstable yes open loop also unstable closed loop also unstable when you put k equal to 1 you got yes open loop was unstable but now closed loop the same closed loop system is now marginally stable and the third one if you see magic what was the magic that open loop system unstable but closed loop system stable the same open loop system when it is closed loop it becomes stable right what does this mean what does this mean even if open loop system is unstable the overall closed loop system can become stable so we have to check this using we have to check the same thing using frequency domain i hope you are understanding my point why we are using this nyquist stability criteria right yes so the same thing we have to analyze in frequency domain so how to do that let us see if you see nyquist stability criteria is a mathematical or it is based on a mathematical tool which is nothing but principle of argument this is a mathematical tool which is based on principle of argument getting my point what is principle of argument I will tell you just now see what does that mean I will tell you it states that suppose you have one plane in control system point of view itself let me call some plane as s plane let us say right and you have another plane let us say gh plane we have seen right gh plane we know what is gh plane now see what happens magic what happens now see this principle of argument says that says that if for example let us say you have two poles on the right half and also you have one zero on the right half right it's okay explain unstable right yes if you see what does the principle of argument say principle of argument says that you please draw one region around it you please draw one region around it whatever you find suspicious you please draw some region around it yes you have drawn it now do you agree with me that it is in s plane yes it is in s plane now it states that 
you please map this to another plane called as gh plane called as gh plane and when you map this particular region in gh plane what you have is something called as encirclements what you get here is something called as encirclements in gh plane means the same thing the same thing when you check in this gh plane you see it in the form of encirclements how this happens i will tell you don't worry but for time being understand the concept okay now what does the principle of argument state about this it states that it states that number of encirclements number of encirclements which is given by n is nothing but equal to p plus minus z plus what is p plus and z plus i will tell you let us see yes so it states that number of encirclements which is given by n is equal to p plus minus z plus what is p plus and z plus i will tell you don't worry what is p plus p plus is nothing but number of poles in this region number of poles in this region given right and z plus means what z plus means number of zeros in the region getting my point right p plus means number of poles in the region and z plus means number of zeros in the region got it no problem right yes now let me tell you something beautiful see if this n equal to p minus z if this thing turns out to be positive turns out to be positive right then the direction of encirclements is anti clockwise direction of encirclements is anti clockwise you'll say how does that happen yes it happens i will show you that don't worry right and if this sum or if this p minus z is n equal to p plus minus z plus if this turns out to be negative then encirclements because see definitely when we talk about encirclements in gh plane right which means there has to be some other the circles now if circles are there which means there has to be some direction to the circles so either it can be clockwise or it can be anti clockwise so if n equal to p plus minus z plus if it is positive then it means that the direction is anti clockwise if it is negative it means that yes it is going to be clockwise i hope you are understanding this concept right yes now if you see now i will tell you a beautiful advantage of this what is the advantage if you see nyquist stability criteria is a right handed analysis method it is a right handed analysis method this means that whatever is in the left keep it in the left i am not at all interested in it means if for example you have let us say two poles here or let us say you have one zero here or you have some pole here i am not interested in the left i am interested only in what is happening in the right why because this particular right right side gives me the instability hence it is also called as right handed analysis method right handed analysis method getting my point yes because what happens in left i am not interested what happens in right i want to know whether pole is there zero is there what is happening there i have to know right now let us think of stability criteria because now we have seen that the principle of argument so what is principle of argument let me just tell you again in a short time see you have one s plane you have another plane gh yes it states that whatever you want to map for example see because i am interested in the 
right side of this yes right half of this so what will i do whatever is there here i will make some area around it i'll make some region around it or some contour around it okay contour or region or area anything you want to call you can call it right and then i will map the same thing on the gh plane and when i map what is there in the half side of this one when i map this here in the gh plane it turns out to be a circle it turns out to be a circle which is also called as encirclements now since it is a circle what does the principle of argument state principle of argument states that the number of encirclements is nothing but equal to p plus minus z plus p plus minus z plus right what does that mean what does that mean p plus is what p plus is the number of poles in the region of interest like for example here i have got two poles so now for this case p plus is going to be two similarly what is the meaning of z plus z plus is the number of zeros in the region you are interested in so it becomes z plus z plus for here if you see it is going to be one you have only one zero it becomes z plus is equal to one right yes now if you see if there are you find encirclements here right which means there has to be some other circles definitely so if circles are there which means they can either be in anti clockwise direction or in clockwise direction so if this n equal to p plus minus z plus if this is positive then we say that encirclements are anti clockwise and if it is negative then we say that it is going to be clockwise i hope you are understanding the concept right yes now let us understand the nyquist ability criteria because once we have understood this principle of argument it becomes very very simple how it becomes simple let us see if you take gh equal to what will i do is i will take k into numerator of s upon denominator s it's okay no problem if i think of numerator of s numerator of s gives you what numerator of s gives you open loop zeros why open loop because this is gh this is not 1 plus gh this is gh right yes so it will be open loop zeros now what does the denominator give you denominator gives you open loop poles correct yes correct no problem no problem till then everything is okay sir yes now comes the point if this is gh what is 1 plus gh dear what is 1 plus gh 1 plus gh is nothing but denominator of s or i can say let me take it another way it becomes 1 plus k times numerator of s upon denominator of s right i am replacing the same thing here now what do i get here i get denominator of s plus k times numerator of s upon denominator of s is that right yes now see what i am interested in what will i do is i am interested in only this particular term i am interested in only this system consideration okay let me only talk about 1 plus gh if you see 1 plus gh equal to 0 what does that give you if you equate this to 0 what happens this also goes there this also becomes 0 then whatever are the roots of this one will give you this gives you what this gives you closed loop poles am i right yes this gives you closed loop poles now let me erase this let me just write this also because it is interested i want it right and what is this, this denominator of s if you see this denominator of s which is there it is nothing but the open loop pole which means this denominator of s gives you nothing but open loop pole getting my point yes now here comes the very very important thing very very important thing see here very easy and very important 
let me have a system who is having this way let us say this is s plane and this is gh plane okay as usual what will i do now i will tell you see if for example i have three closed loop poles here let me draw it with red itself okay let us say that i have three closed loop poles here these are closed loop poles okay closed loop poles clp right and let us say for the same system i have got i have got one open loop pole here this is olp open loop pole here same system same system i have got three closed loop poles here and i have got one open loop pole here it can happen right we have seen that yes yes now what am i interested in what will i do here is very interesting see because i am interested only in the right right handed approach right so what will i do i will make a region around it and i will try to map this here in that in terms of encirclements here there will be some of the other encirclements right and if you remember from the augmented thing we know that encirclements n is nothing but equal to p plus minus z plus is that right yes yes it is right what does this mean what does this mean let me just take it here let me just take it here this is very very easy see n is equal to p plus minus z plus what was p plus p plus was the number of poles number of poles in the particular region so if you see the number of poles in the particular region is nothing but what olp it is nothing but the open loop pole right so i can directly replace this by open loop pole so i can write n equal to p plus p plus can be directly replaced by open loop pole plus plus sign y just to indicate that it is in the right half of the plane right n is equal to open loop pole olp minus minus now if you see you have got this z plus what is z plus z plus is what z plus is nothing but the what it was it was the open loop zero if you remember it was the open loop zero or i can also say that it was nothing but the numerator right because right dear yes this z plus which was there it was what it was zeros in the interested region zeros in the interested region so for now if you see zero in the interested region it is nothing but the closed loop poles itself closed loop poles which means this z plus can be replaced by closed loop poles plus this becomes your formula for encirclements where i can write that what is olp plus olp plus is nothing but open loop pole at right half open loop pole at right half and what is closed loop pole plus it is going to be clp plus is going to be what it is nothing but closed loop pole at right half closed loop pole at right half so now this is the formula that n is equal to olp plus minus clp plus it's okay right now we need to understand what is the criteria what does the criteria say by the way if you see here what is happening if i focus on this one 1 plus gh we know that 1 plus gh equal to 0 gives the characteristic equation so gh equal to minus 1 right this will give you the what it is going to give you the closed loop poles which means what does this minus 1 minus 1 means minus 1 plus j0 so whatever encirclements i check those encirclements will be about this minus 1 plus j0 i hope you are understanding the point right so first one if encirclement if encirclement is about minus 1 plus j0 then what happens is then what happens is we know that n is equal to n is equal to olp plus minus clp plus what is olp it is open loop pole at 
right half of s plane similarly clp plus is what it is nothing but closed loop pole at right half so this is n equal to olp plus minus clp plus if encirclement is around minus 1 plus j0 right yes and also we have seen that and also we have seen that if n is positive then the encirclement is in anti clockwise direction and if n is negative then the encirclement is in clockwise direction we have seen that right yes now for stability what happens what happens for stability for stability it is a very simple thing you know that for stability in the sense closed loop poles at rh should be zero there should be no closed loop pole in the right half of s plane right yes so you can directly substitute it here so you get n equal to olp plus plus zero which is nothing but olp plus so n is equal to olp plus right Yes, so this is the stability criteria. If my encirclement is equal to open loop poles at RH, then system is stable. If it is not, system is unstable. That's it. Very simple. Now, this stability is for what? It is for overall system. It is for overall system. Now, the next one. Next one is what? I will tell you. If encirclement is around 0 comma 0 is around origin then what is going to happen then what is going to happen if it is around origin no if which means that you only have this gh equal to k into numerator of s upon denominator of s which means you are trying to find the stability of this open loop system only getting my point right yes so this means that this means that For this one, it is going to become n equal to open loop pole plus minus open loop 0 plus. It is going to be open loop 0 only. Right. For this one, if you apply because this is open loop pole and this is open loop 0. So if you apply this one for this, you get the same result. Right. Whereas when you took that 1 plus gh, when you thought of that my encirclement should be around minus 1 plus j0, minus 1 plus j0 will be somewhere here. Then you understood that no, no, no. Here for this case, a denominator gives you open loop pole and the numerator gives you closed loop pole. So accordingly, you have to change the formula. Right. So this is the way it is. This is also a very, very important formula. We will take one example as well on this one. Right. This is when, when my encirclement is around 0, 0, but note, this is not going to give you stability for the overall closed loop system. Stability for the overall closed loop system will be given by the first one itself. So this is very, very important. I hope things are very, very clear to you. So that's it. Thank you.